Blessings of love and peace from the Diocese of Pasig. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Regional Council of the Ecclesiastical Province of Manila, Adoracion Nocturna Filipina, for inviting me to uh, share some thoughts with you on the Eucharist. No? What a beautiful way to uh, thank the Lord for uh, your 101st anniversary of uh, uh, service to the church, not only here in the Philippines, but globally, you know, as adorers of the Eucharist. You know. uh, the theme given to me is uh, the Holy Eucharist, synergizer of piety and prayer into apostolates and apostles. You know. uh, when I was praying over this uh, theme and what to share with you, uh, what immediately came to mind was a gospel text uh, from uh, uh, John, uh, the gospel according to John. And let me read that text. Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, 
and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. This is from John 6, 32 to 38. Bago po natin tignan itong uh, magandang connection ng scripture text na ito dun sa theme, no? alam nyo, tatapating ko po kayo. Ako po ay naintriga dito sa inyong uh, sub-theme, no? lalo na yung word na synergizer. No? Sabi ko, ano po, mukhang uh, heavy po yung word. No? Anyway, nag-research po ako ng konti, no? and uh, I think it would be good to uh, perhaps give uh, a little bit of etymology of the word synergy no? um, so that we will see how the Eucharist is a synergizer. No? Uh, this really stems from the Greek word synergos, no? which means working together. No? Uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines synergy as combined action or operation. And if you have read uh, uh, this uh, classic uh, work of Stephen R. Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he would talk about synergy in this way, no? if I may paraphrase it. When two or more people use their individual talents, strengths, and abilities to achieve a common goal, they produce far better results working together than what each one can do working alone. Dinagdag pa nga niya, gusto mo ng magandang mathematical equation sa synergy? 1 plus 1 daw is equal to 3. Alam niyo, maganda talaga ang pagnilayan ito, no? Kasi uh, pag pinag-usapan natin yung word na synergy, tapos yung Eucharist as a synergizer, parang sinasabi, no? Even the word, no? Uh, coming from synergy, just energy tells us when you have what we call an explosion of energy or a bundle of energy no, coming from different sources, you will see how it is able no, to produce results. No? And perhaps no, to, to see how much uh, uh, it can be very productive. For the Eucharist, we will see it as how the Eucharist can uh, produce many uh, results no, that will uh, be beneficial to Christian life. No? Um, and perhaps to understand more how the Eucharist is a synergizer, I'd like to go back no, to uh, this fundamental question. And this is actually oriented no, to uh, this uh, uh, topic no, that we have. How is the Eucharist synergizer of piety and prayer into apostolates and apostles? No? Um, I think it will help no, if we go back to what the bishops wrote. No? Like if you uh, go back 10 years ago to prepare us for uh, our fifth centenary or what has just uh, been celebrated last year, there is still a spillover this year, our 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines. No? Uh, this pastoral um, exhortation uh, was uh, entitled, Live Christ, Share Christ. No? And uh, basically, it presented to us particular pointers no, on what to focus on as we prepared for this 500, celebra 500 anniversary celebration of Christianity in the Philippines. No? And one part there was very interesting. He said, uh, when you talk of three imperatives no, in our own Christian life, 
They are number one, the centrality of the Eucharist, and the number two, the necessity of prayer, and the number three, the necessity of conversion. Um, if I may just uh, uh, amplify these three points, no, we will understand how the Eucharist is a synergizer. No? Doon pa lang po sa una, the centrality of the Eucharist no? in Christian life. This was already, already written in the documents of the Church in Vatican II. No? The references are there in Sacrosanctum Concilium number 10. No? And even in our catechism, coming from the catechism of the Catholic Church, our catechism for Filipino Catholics, no? it was reiterated that the Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life. Doon pa lang po, no? makikita na natin kung ito na yung core, no? ito na yung source, no? ito na po yung pinanggagalingan. No? Makikita natin yung seven sacraments, no? alam natin yan. No? The central sacrament, the core sacrament is the Eucharist. And from there, everything flows. And you know everything is like energized. No? And then we see here, no? Uh, if the Eucharist no, is the core, no, then the second imperative makes sense. No? Uh, the necessity of prayer in Christian life. Isn't it true? The highest form of prayer is the Eucharist. And we know as we celebrate the Eucharist, we are praying as a church, as the body of Christ. No? Sabi nga nila, kahit uh, uh, magkaroon ka ng isang libong rosario that can never pit no? the, the Eucharist, no? even how many novenas. But there's still an interconnection here. No? Um, and I'd like to see here how much when we celebrate the Eucharist and then um, this even flows to our intense devotion of adoration, prayer no? uh, to the Eucharist, we are, we are given energy to live our Christian life. And not only that, that energy flows outside as we live it with others. No? At maganda nga pong tignan din, no? kasi alam naman natin na it is... Uh, the highest form of devotion if we adore the Eucharist. No? And then, even the other devotions like our prayers, our novenas, even our via crucis, via lucis, no? whatever popular religiosity and piety we have, no? it is always no, flowing from our devotion to the Eucharist. No? Because, all our prayers are directed to no one else but Jesus. Jesus, our Eucharistic Lord. Which leads me to the third uh, uh, imperative. And this is the necessity of conversion. No? Um, you know, when you talk of conversion, the Greek term is metanoia. No? It means a change of heart. No? Really a change of life. No? And this is where... Uh, even our bishops shared with us no, that even though we are uh, considered the dominant uh, uh, Christian country in Asia, no, majority of our people are Catholic Christians. No, uh, we all we, we still fall short of living out our own faith. No? Sabi nga ako, pag tinignan nga yung ating mga statistics, no, uh, sabihin na natin na uh, uh, meron tayong let's say uh, uh, over 80% of Catholic uh, uh, Christians no? uh, but we understand clearly that uh, most of them, majority of them are nominal no? ilang po yung pupunta sa simbahan ilang po talaga yung nag, uh, naging active no? sa ating church services no? uh, Nakakalungkot pong isipin niya, no? Kaya sabi nga po ito yung term culpas, no? Have mercy, Lord, no? Yan ang sinasabi. 
uh, tayo po ay nagpapakumbaba dahil kailangan po natin yung uh, pagbabagong buhay, pagpabagong loob. At ang kailangan po natin conversion ay ito pa. No? Kasi alam naman natin, kahit tayo deboto sa Eucharistia, tayo nagsisimba, tayo nagdadasal, magandang itanong. Paano ba ito no, bumubukal sa talagang um, makabulog, makabulang buhay kristyano? And sadly, at times even for those who are active, their Catholic Christian life is uh, left at the inside the walls of the church. No? Kaya, kalimitan nga, ang tawag nga dun sa atin ay katoliko sarado, doble kandado, no? Kandado na lang at hindi nga nararamdaman, nakikita, uh, nagiging tanglaw sa pagsasabuhay ang ating buhay kristyano sana. No? So, uh, I think this three will make us understand, no? the Eucharist, no? um, as the center of uh, our Christian life, no? as the source and summit of Christian life, no? is actually the source, no? even of our prayers no and what should flow out of the eucharist should be seen in our own living out of the eucharist no it should not be left in the the church it should be uh, seen and experienced on how we live good and holy lives at home in our offices in our christian communities no? So having said that, perhaps now we understand, no? kaya pala magandang tignan, synergizer. At eto nga po, yung theme po ninyo no, sa Adorasyon Nocturna ay galing po dito sa inyong Article 18 no, sa Constitution and Bylaws po ninyo, itong three social apostolates. And that is number one, evangelization, number two, livelihood, and number three, promotion of priestly vocation. Now, we ask first, why do we have to evangelize about the Eucharist? Um, I will be straightforward. No? And you know, during this preparation for our 500th uh, uh, anniversary as a Christian nation, no, during this, kasi bawat year ho, meron po tayong mga dinesignate na uh, uh, aspects no, that is called from the uh, from PCP2 no? and uh, in 2016 we actually celebrated the year of the Eucharist and this was at the time when you know we we had this uh, uh, celebration here in the Philippines of the 51st uh, Na uh, International Eucharistic Congress our bishops came out with a uh, loaded uh, pastoral letter no, on the Eucharist. And medyo ito nga sabi ko straightforward. Sabi po dun sa letter, no, uh, and I quote part, no, if you want renewal, kneel again. We kneel to atone for the countless profane actions against the Eucharist. As we bow down and adore the Eucharist, we also beg for mercy for the sacrilege and desecration the sacred species are repeatedly subjected to in many communities. We seek pardon for liturgical experiments and abuses, the narcissism among ordained ministers seeking popularity rather than piety, for taking the mass for granted, for the irreverent attire and the cold interior disposition when we attend the Mass. No? Um, sabi nga po, bato-bato sa langit, tamaan, wag magalit, pero lahat po tayo tatamaan. No? Bispo ka, pari ka, madri ka, no? ikaw ay uh, konsagradang laig, ikaw ay you know, active uh, uh, church servant, no? ikaw ay parishioner, lahat po tayo, no? lahat po tayong katoliko, tatamaan po tayo dito sa mga sinabi po ng obispo. No? Lahat tayo, no? Kasi totoo kaya we have to evangelize about the Eucharist, no? Uh, kasi kahit ho dun sa uh, mga uh, liturgical worship po natin, parang lumalabas, marami na po ang, kumbaga ay 
uh, irreverent no pagdating po sa uh, ating pagsamba no alam po natin yan no kung sinabi nga ho ng obispo no kung hanggang ngayon po no mayroon pa ring mga uh, tatanggap ng komunyon pagkatapos nabalitaan na po natin yan no nung matagal na rin may nangyayari pa rin iniisip nila yung yung uh, uh, yung host no yung sacred host no ay merong anting-anting pinapakain sa manok o kaya yung iba ay curious no tatanggapin pero alam naman natin no iluluwa titigna no iba ibubulsa this is desecration and uh, how sad it is kaya pag pupunta ho kayo sa mga simbahan medyo yung ating mga ushers greeters pati pagtanggap natin tinitingnan how reverent we are at binabantayan yung bang tinatanggap natin sa ating mga palad talagang ating po sinusubo no uh, and alam natin kahit po kami uh, ako ay minsan na, na nasasabihin din po no dapat pati yung pagmimisa ay dapat solemn no yung mga pagkakataon dumadating no? sa dami din po ng pagmimisa no napapabilis ang pagsasalita at nararamdaman para nagmamadali sa misa ang pare no uh, You know all this, no? And you know when you go to church, you will see. Remember, it's Sunday worship. But one thing we have to evangelize is, you know, this is the day of the Lord. We are really called to go to church in proper attire. But sadly, what has happened? Though? There are those who just, you know, uh, want to go there as they wish. Ito nga pong nangyaring pandemic, case in point. Kasi alam naman natin, no, binigyan po tayo ng uh, pahintulot na magmisa online, dala nga ng pandemic, pandemya, hindi pa po nalilift yan. No? Nasa alert level 1 pa nga tayo no, hanggang ngayon. Pero uh, napapansin natin, pati yung iba, for convenience and comfortability. Magsisimba ka ng online sa bahay, pero para ka bang nasa kama ka, di ba? <laughs> Parang wala eh, no? Ni hindi mo nakikita yung kahalagahan na in real time you are before the Eucharistic Lord you are celebrating the highest form of prayer no and i think this is something to uh, to correct no kasi uh, nagkukulang po tayo dito parang complacent na ba no kaya nga binigyan na rin po tayo ng guidelines pag magmimisa kahit online saan man nakalagay yung iyong gadget, TV, kung saan ka nag online mas, dapat maayos din ang suot mo, reverend ka, kasi ikaw ay nakaharap sa Panginoon. So you see, that is why we have to evangelize on the Eucharist. No? And uh, uh, it's good that we go back to our scripture text. Look at John 6 verse 32. The Lord Himself said, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. That declaration of Jesus is so powerful. Pag yan, ninamnam natin, pinaglimian natin. Tuwing tayo po'y nagdiriwang ng Eucharistia, yan po ang tunay at totoong tinapay ng buhay, tinapay na si Jesus na galing sa langit. Siya ay bumaba mula sa langit at siya'y kasama natin at pinatutunayan niya ang kanyang pag-ibig. At dahil sa presensyang yan, dapat nandyan po yung ating talagang solemn ng pagpupugay at paggalang. You know, just to share with you, no, uh, I do not know if you know this uh, 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 late Cardinal Francis Xavier Nguyen Van Tuan. No? You know, he was imprisoned no, in, uh, uh, during the, the Vietnam War, the Saigon War in uh, uh, the 70s for 13 years. No? And perhaps, no, uh, it was, he, at, at first he thought, paano ako magdidiwang ng Eucharistia? Obispo ako, pari ako. Buti na lang, no? uh, mapalad siya dahil kung bagay may nagdadala din ng pagkain sa kanya kahit nandun yung mga guards. No? Uh, nag, nag, kung bagay sabi, nagdala, naglagay sa flashlight ng, ng mass wine, no? 
pati ng ano ng sacred host. No ini inspection tinatanong ano 'yon, no? Siyempre mga hindi naniniwala sa Dios, mga hindi naman Kristiyano. Eh sinabi lang yung yung mass wine parang food for the food for the uh, para medicine for the stomach. Eh siyempre yung bread host, obvious bread, no? So pinaintulutan naman. Remember, uh, he was in prison. He had no liturgical books, but he was blessed with that with pieces of sacred host that will sustain him each day and the mass wine of course he had water and he celebrated mass on the palm of his hand and he gave this testimony when he was sharing this no during the retreat to the roman curia during the time of uh, saint john paul ii when pope uh, john paul ii was our holy father and still alive sabi niya I will never be able to express my great joy every day with three drops of wine and a drop of water in the palm of my hand. I would celebrate Mass. This was my altar and this was my cathedral. It was true medicine for soul and body. Each time I celebrated Mass, I had the opportunity to extend my hands and nail myself to the cross with Jesus to drink with him the bitter chalice this moving testimony you know uh, should motivate us no uh, to to really always no uh, make that holy reverence before the eucharistic lord in every celebration of the mass and whenever the blessed sacrament is exposed alam niyo no maidagdag ko lang Uh, naikwento pa nga ni uh, Cardinal Francis Xavier Nguyen Van Tuano na memory lang yung pagdadasal niya nung una nung nagmimisa siya sa palm of his hand, nagtataka yung mga kasama niyang nandun, yung iba hindi katoliko pati yung mga guards no, na nakikita siya no? Latin pa nga siguro yung ginagamit niya noon alam nyo sumama sila at there were conversions Imagine how the synergy of the Eucharist that was celebrated brought forth conversion. And this was celebrated on the palm of the hand of a bishop who was in prison. Let me go to the second question. Why should the Eucharist flow into livelihood for others? No. Um, Maganda pong tignan ito, no? And, uh, again, straightforward, no? Look at every Mass. How would it conclude, no? The right would say, The Mass is ended, go forth in peace. The Mass is ended, let us love and serve the Lord always. And my favorite, one that is paraphrased, The Mass is ended, our mission begins. Totoo naman, eh, no? Because the Eucharist we celebrate must lead into a lifestyle into living out the bread we receive no must be bread for others and we become the eucharist when we are able to share that bread in varied ways no? maganda nga po yung sinabi dito ni Pope Francis 2015 i think in one of his uh, in in one of his speeches or sermons no sabi niya Those nourished by the Eucharist are called to bring the joy of the gospel to those who have not received it. Strengthened by the living bread, we are called to bring hope to those who live in darkness and in despair. So magandang pag-isipan po ito. No? Pag tayo po ba'y nagmimisa, pag tayo hinahamon, pagkatapos nung uh, uh, sinasabi ng pare, go, What happens to us? How do we become Eucharist for others? Like when you go home, no? uh, are you able to uh, reach out to your loved ones? Have that listening, not only ear but heart? If you are parents, how is parenting done to your children? as bread broken for them or if you're a servant of the church how are you able to become bread for others 
as you go to the peripheries and serve the poor. Sabi nga po, no, maganda yung livelihood kasi hindi lang naman basta nagwo-worship tayo. Dapat ipakita po natin na yung Eucharistia ay talagang ating ibinabahagi at natutulungan ang mga nangangailangan. At magandang isipin po, hindi lang po ayuda, kasama po yan. Pero pag sinabing livelihood, how can you also empower others, empower the poor, so that they can, through livelihoods, lift their spirits up. At sabi nga, maiangat ang kanilang buhay para they can also be self self-sufficient. And if they do, that blessing also should multiply. Kaya alam nyo, natutuwa ako pag meron po tayo mga, mga mandated organizations o you know, katulad po ninyo, no? mga members ng Adora Adoracion Nocturna, yung inyo pong mga uh, gawain para tumulong sa mga nangangailangan at uh, sila po ay nabibigyan ng pag-asa no? para talagang mabuhay ng maayos ay nagaganap. This is a clear testimony of what it means no? to be bread for others. No? Naalala ko po nga yung kwento. Eh, no? uh, uh, merong isang lalaki, sabi niya, <clears throat> uh, God, bakit ganun? No? Uh, ang dami nagugutom, ang dami nagdudusa. Uh, nakakalungkot, parang wala kang ginagawa. No? Nasabi niya, hindi niya kalain, sasagot pala ang Diyos. No? Kaya nga ginawa kita eh. Ikaw yung magiging tinapay para sa kapwa mo. So dear friends, no, I think this is where we understand why we have to make the Eucharist flow, flow in our uh, establishing or organizing um, livelihood programs no, for others. If I will go back to John 6, no, uh, verse 35, that's why the Lord said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Because once we receive the Eucharist, we are empowered by that grace of the Eucharist, that blessing of the Eucharist, no? to become Eucharist for our brothers and sisters in need, for everyone we encounter in our life. Every celebration of the Mass, every adoration of the Holy Eucharist. Which leads me now to the third and final question. No? Why do we have to be a promoter of priestly vocations? Um, and I'd like to go to a very famous saint, no? one of my favorite saints also, uh, Saint John Marie Vianney. Sabi niya, no, where there is no priest, there is no sacrifice. I was thinking about this statement, but you see the devil wants to attack a priest. No? Even in today's world, we understand no? there will be many evil forces that would want sana wala ng pare or that would want to destroy the reputation of a priest. And para si sabi niya nga no, kasi pag nawala ng pare, walang holy sacrifice of the mass. Walang magdiriwang ng tinatawag na sacrifice of Christ, the paschal mystery of Christ. Uh, and we know that in our day and age, this is a reality. Limbawa po, no? Uh, one thing we have to open our eyes, no? Uh, about is that there is really a lack of priests when we talk of the worldwide situation. Mapalad po tayo dito sa Pilipinas, kahit pa paano, no? Meron tayo mga naoordinahang mga, mga diyako, no? Mga pare, no? Marami pong madre, no? Kahit papano, taglilingkod sa iba't ibang diocese, no? 
Pero hindi naman po lahat. Napakadami dito. Yung mga diocese po tayo dito talagang paisa-isa lang and they're really in need no of uh, of priests. No? That's why we have to pray for vocations. No? But I'm talking of the West. No? Alam nyo ba, yung sinabi ni Pope Benedict dati that there is what we call a, an inter- a desert happening in the West is that one symptom is wala na pong nagpapari. Kaya yung mga seminaryo doon, sa Europe, sa Amerika, nagko-close down. No? Tapos ay talagang yung, yung kanilang mga churches doon, magaganda pero walang pare. And thanks be to God, maganda ka celebration natin ng 5th centenary no? natin ngayon kasi uh, tayo ngayon ang mission sending sa iba't ibang bansa. Especially in the West. No? You know how blessed we are. No? Imagine, no? Uh, that uh, even the leaders no, of the uh, universal church in different uh, institutes, congregations are Filipinos. Of course, one of them is uh, our uh, 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 Archbishop Emeritus of Manila, no? uh, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, who is the prefect no, of uh, uh, propag- the Congregation for the Evangelization of People, so Propaganda Fide. No? And then just recently, you heard, no, uh, brother uh, 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 Armin Luistro, no, was elected, no, as uh, the head of the Lasal Brothers, no, uh, globally, no, Pilipino po yan, no. At meron pa pong mga iba-ibang Pilipino na sabi nga magugulat ka head pala ng mga congregations worldwide, no. Um, but you see, I think this is where we understand, no the importance of promoting priestly vocations. No? Napakahalaga po niyan. At alam natin na kailangan po tayong tumulong no? uh, sa iba't ibang bansa, sa iba't ibang dioceses. And knowing also how our overseas Filipino workers no, are the ones now who are missionaries and they need priests no, also to guide them. Uh, naalala ko, no, isang CBCP plenary namin years back, may isang obispo talaga na niniklohod. No? Sabi niya, baka pwede nyo kami bigyan ng mga Pilipinong pari on loan. No? Ito pa isang obispo sa Amerika. No? Uh, just recently, may lumapit po sa akin isang pari no, from another country. At sinasabi sa akin, uh, Bishop, baka pwede po kayong magbigay sa amin ng mga seminarista o pari. No? Tumulong man lang. So, uh, interestingly, no, I, I'd like to quote here no, uh, the words of St. John Paul II. No, and uh, uh, this was a message no, of, uh, that was done no, for the World Prayer of Vocations then no, in the year 2000. No, sabi niya, no, Let every believer become an educator of vocations without fearing to propose radical choices let every community understand the centrality of the Eucharist and the necessity for ministers of the Eucharistic sacrifice. Let the whole world, the whole people of God, raise an ever more intense and impassioned prayer to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into His harvest. Ganda po ng mga sinabi ni St. John Paul II dito. No? Pero dito natin makikita, no? Pati ang Eucharist no, prods us no? and perhaps no, is giving us an impetus no, to be a promoter of vocation. If we will channel our spiritual energy not only to become evangelizers no, of the Eucharist, not only to be uh, an organizer of livelihoods for the poor, to be bread broken for others, but of course no, to, to also promote priestly vocations, then uh, we are trying to ensure also how the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the Eucharist celebrated, will uh, be uh, shared with us no? and uh, will be given to us so that we can be sustained in our Christian life. No? Kaya nga, balik tayo dun sa John 6 verse 38. It was the Lord who said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. Jesus is the eternal high priest sent by the Father. We go back to the Last Supper when He instituted the Eucharist 
and he also instituted no, uh, those who will be ordained to serve the church. Um, I'd like to end with this uh, question for reflection and prayer. How have you been an evangelizer of the Eucharist, promoter of vocations to the priesthood, and bread broken for others? Muli po ako nagpapasalamat sa Regional Council no, ng Ecclesiastical Province of Manila, Adorasyon Nocturna, Filipina. Salamat po sa paanyaya. Sana po itong konting pagbabahagi ko ay makatulong no, para lalo pong palalimin ang ating pakikapagunayan sa Banal na Eucharistia. No. At uh, hiling ko lang po sa inyong pagmimisa, sa inyong pagtatanod sa Banal na Eucharistia. Huwag niyo po ang kalilimutan ipagdasal ako at ipagdasal po ang uh, Diocese of Pasig. Maraming salamat po. Oh